today's uh, webinar, Breaking It Down, a Fall Marketing Plan uh, to Help You Grow. Uh, before I, I go into the agenda even, I think sometimes this webinar can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of information to it. Um, take it in, maybe think about walking away with one, two, three maybe pieces that you want to execute immediately as you're moving into fall. And then really think about this as a, as a big process that you might want to think about doing again and we'll, we'll present again in uh, November and think about your whole year and how to really build a plan out with some thought and some time times um, and it becomes a much bigger um, bigger plan and has a lot more capability when you when you have a little more time going into the season but as we're going into fall now today some of the stuff I have it might um, seem a little overwhelming uh, pick and pull a couple pieces that might help help your business immediately. And that'll help you not quite uh, feel so overwhelmed as we go through the, as go through the progress here. We're gonna start on a PowerPoint and then we'll move into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so we're gonna start out on this PowerPoint, the, the overview or the agenda. We're gonna talk about growth versus marketing dollars because if they're not in balance, then you're not gonna get one or the other. You're either not gonna get the growth or you're not spending the right amount of money. So um, you wanna make sure they're in balance. So we'll talk about that. Then we're gonna talk about creating some goals. You know, Start with some big goals and then how do you break it down so that it's not quite so overwhelming. I'm gonna talk about a concept of the marketing machine, um, which, which kind of puts it all into uh, perspective. And then, um, and pulls all different campaigns together. Then we'll move into some different campaigns. So we're gonna talk about inbound versus outbound. Uh, you know, we hear a lot about outbound in this day and age, or inbound, I'm sorry. We're gonna talk a little more about outbound today than inbound actually. And then we're gonna talk about low hanging fruit, golden streets, and uh, some direct mail versus some guerrilla marketing and things like that. We probably won't get to timeline for action action items. I will try and keep this close to an hour. It may go a little over depending if we have some questions or anything like that. You should have a button that says ask questions and, um, and then hopefully I can see those questions and I'll be able to slow down and answer questions as we go along. So feel free to stop me, ask any questions. It, it just gives it a little different feel to make it a little more, um, a little more personal. If you like to call, we'll uh, monitor for questions on our end so you can you know, do your spiel and not have that to worry be, about that. We'll bring them that, up as they come up. That would be great, Kate, because I can't see them on my end. So if you could uh, chime in when they come in, that would be great. Will do. Thanks. And you can see my, my screen okay, correct, Kate? Yeah, looks awesome. Okay, great. So growth versus marketing uh, dollars. So if you're not growing, you're dying. And you're not growing if you're not putting some money into marketing. So how much money do you need to put into marketing to actually grow the way that you want to or to keep your growth within the range that is really reasonable? So in this industry, um, you should be aiming for about $100 to $125 cost per sale. So that means for every customer that you, um, if you add up all your marketing sales or all your marketing costs, I'm sorry, and all your sales and divide them, then you should come out with $100 to $125 cost per sale. And it's really important that you look at it as a whole, you know, look at every customer and all your marketing together because they really work all hand in hand. So um, that, that $100 to $125 is key. Um, but there's some really critical pieces to that. Number one, not all customers are created equal. So we might be willing to pay more to get some customers than others. So that's, that's important to recognize which customers are you paying for and, and paying more for. And um, then the age of your business can affect this as well. If you have a brand new business that you're just getting up and running, these costs usually go closer to 125 to 150. It's just the cost of getting business, starting to build your list, starting to build your database, and, uh, and, and that cost goes up a little more is, it has been my experience. So, um, you know, if I'm talking to a brand new customer, we might be talking about buying lists and doing direct mail and doing more guerrilla marketing. Whereas if I'm talking to a company who might have 10, 15 years, they might have a lot of database built that we can really utilize to decrease some of the costs. So um, you got to keep that in mind when you look at that $100 to $125. 
So this concept of the marketing machine came um, from a book, Reality Marketing. The author is uh, Eric Kalis. He also has a marketing company, Square Two Marketing. Um, really great marketing guru. Love his voice. Love hearing him speak. And he talks about a marketing machine. And essentially, in this day and age, people have so much marketing and so much advertising thrown at them day in and day out. It's just everywhere around you. It's on the roads, it's on your computers, it's in your mail, it's just everywhere. So um, you have to be the person they think of when their pain is greatest. So your prospect enters your marketing machine the very first time that they hear your company name. And so that's at A. They're going to buy when their pain is greatest, right? When they really want to design, build product, project, or when they really are tired of the weeds in their lawn or the bare spots, you know, that when that pain is greatest, that's when they're going to call you. But again, remember our cost per sale. We got to keep that in check. We got to make sure that doesn't go too high. So how do we stay in front of, uh, in front of people so that if their pain is greatest at B, D, L, or Z, no matter when it is, you're the person they think of because they've seen your brand, they've seen your, um, your information, they've seen you, they've heard about you, and you're the one they call. And that might be really fast because that's what they're looking for, or that might mean they've been thinking about it for a really long time and you've been the one that has stayed in front of them. So I want you to really think about this marketing machine as we go in because I'm going to give you a lot of different ways to market. Um, and some people say, well, I'm not doing that piece or I'm not doing this piece. And you got to look at it as a whole machine that when you put it out there, it continues to be in front of people in many different ways. And, and it makes it economical at the end. So when you, when you get to that, that average, it makes sense. Okay. And we'll talk more about the marketing machine as we get into some of those campaigns, cause it'll, it might make a little more sense then. <coughs> Inbound versus outbound. I kind of hit on this a little bit. We hear lots about inbound um, in this day and age. You know, inbound marketing, Holganics has a ton of inbound marketing. We're uh, really all about the website and blogging and providing information for you um, in, in the new technology of biology within our industry. So um, we want to help you learn about it. We want to educate you. And, and we use a lot of inbound methods. Um, I love it. It builds uh, you as an expert and people begin to trust you as they learn more and read more and become involved in your business that way. Uh, inbound methods are things like search engine optimization, social media, blogging, content generation, videos, email blasts, bio summits. Those are all things where we're educating and we're coming out and we wanna really get people to come and be interested in it and not just buy a product, okay? So um, I love inbound mar marketing. You can see Holganics is built on that a lot, um, but it can also be time consuming and it can be a little harder to prove your ROI. You know, um, where exactly did they hear about you? How do you really result a blog to a sale, right? So it can be a little harder to prove that ROI. And in these methods, a lot of times you're building your database still. You're, there's really, you know, it's a slower process of really building all these blogs, building um, videos, sending out emails, posting on social media. So it can be a little uh, more time consuming. Doesn't mean I don't uh, love it and don't believe it's part of a marketing machine, uh, but Today's webinar, I'm going to talk a lot more about outbound marketing. Outbound marketing, a lot of people consider old school, uh, but I can prove to you your ROI. I can tell you you make this many phone calls or you send this many postcards or um, you, you send this many people out door to door and these are the results that you're going to be looking for. And so we can, we can kind of look back on these methods and I can give you a little more of a plan and, um, and, and give you what you should be looking for as results. I also want to say, you know, outbound methods became old school because our mailboxes got so full of junk, we hated it, right? You open the out mailbox and you took out all the junk and just threw it in the trash. Well, guess what? My email address is now that. I'm getting ready to switch and add a new email address that's all just business because I'm try tired of losing some of the business stuff within the junk. So um, like anything, once everybody jumps on the bandwagon, you have to be creative. A lot of people are doing inbound. There's a lot of emails going out. My, my mailbox isn't quite so full as it used to be. So um, some of these old school methods, people have abandoned and now it's still, still a valid way. Okay, so today we'll talk a little more about outbound and inbound. Kate, any questions or anything to chime in over there? 
Um, no questions so far. Okay, feel free to, um, anybody listening, feel free to tap down and um, in the chat box and send a, send a question out. And uh, again, it kind of breaks it up a little bit. Okay, so jumping into an actual plan. Um, and again, this is kind of, you know, you're gonna look at this whole season or you're gonna look at a whole year and look at that big picture. Um, where, what's the current state of affairs for your business? Uh, what's your current revenue? How many customers do you have? Um, how many programs do your customers have? Or, or do they have aeration and seating and grub and, and a lot of different programs that really build their revenue and make them a really profitable customer? Um, what's your revenue per customer for a new customer versus a two-year-old customer, a five-year-old customer? So these are some things you might want to look at and do just a little bit of analysis so that then you can say, okay, going into the fall, this is what I would like to sell. By the way, if you set a yearly goal, um, your sales goal, um, your fall sales goal should be 25% of your yearly goal. 75% are sold in the spring and 25% are sold in the uh, fall. Okay. How is fall selling different? Um, so obviously it's much shorter season, right? We're going in here and it, it's going to be um, the holidays before we know it and, and it just seems to fly by. Um, a lot of people make a mistake of um, just selling aeration and seed depending on um, your, where you are in the, in the country and what your um, your seasonality is, um, but you want to create a fall program. You don't want to sell just the aeration or just a piece here. Sell an aeration and whatever's left of your program so that you can create a fall program that gives them, um, gives you good revenue and really gives them a good start to the business. Okay. And then obviously your offers are going to be different when you offer, um, you know, what you're going to offer in the spring differs from what you're going to offer in the fall. Make sense? All right, I'm gonna hit a call. This is Barrett. Barrett here. Hi, Barrett. I just want to make one point. One point on this. Hello. So, um, on the fall sales, and what Nicole's getting at is when you sell an aeration or or any other kind of you know kind of one time you know type type of an application, you know it's a nice hit to revenue today, but it's not always a recurring revenue. An aeration would be an example of that, unless you're putting somebody on a, on an every year aeration program. And um, so, if we can sell an aeration along with the rest of your program, let's say you have four applications or three applications left in your program this year, if you sell that whole program, then what you've done is you've just put yourself up to, to do you know, two or three or four applications this year, so it's more revenue this year, but also what you will do and what we've done in the past, you can make a decision whether you want to do it or not, is you automatically sign that person up for your full program next year. You send them a letter and you let them know that this is what you've scheduled them for and and you let them know when you sell them that you're going to go ahead and send them a letter about you know recommended programs for next year but if they complete the rest of the program this year you're going to assume that they want the whole program next year so not only do you get you know the value of the aeration this year the value of those couple applications this year but you get the entire annual revenue next year that's already lined up and ready to go um and that's kind of the, the auto renew recurring revenue nature of our industry and many of you may may be pretty aware of that but if you're not you know that's a, that's a big idea that you, you don't want to miss so back to you, Nicole. Thanks, Barrett. Appreciate it. Okay, so um, after the presentation today, everybody will receive the PowerPoint as well as this spreadsheet. Um, this spreadsheet is unlocked. Anybody can make any changes you want to it. But if you only fill in the yellow blocks, it will do a lot of math for you. And I've been messing with this through a couple different webinars, so I might need to make some changes as we go along, but the one that you will receive will be uh, clean. And if you go through and start filling in the yellow blocks and, and put some thought into your, prod, uh, your program and what you're looking to do this fall as far as marketing, then it'll start it'll start um, kind of feeding you the information that you're gonna see today. So um, I'm gonna go through and change things just a little bit so that it it changes um, just to give you an idea. So um, if we're starting out, we wanna look at our current um, program, okay? And get some, I call this tab at the bottom, this worksheet, and this work, worksheet the pre-work. It's kind of setting up, um, what are we looking to get? How many customers? How much new revenue? Uh, what are our goals for these upcoming weeks and months? So let's start out here. What is your average lawn size? And uh, so it says 5,000. I'm going to change it just so you see how things are affected. So it says 5,000. I'm going to make it 7,000. And you want to make sure you're talking um, 
everybody's talking the same language. So you want to make sure, are you talking treatable turf or lot size? Most likely people are talking treatable turf as opposed to the whole lot size. Um, and then what is the cost of a regular fertilizer application visit for your average size lawn? So a 7,000 square foot treatable turf lawn, what would your price be? So I'm going to change this up to uh, $65 for that size property. And then how many applications are in your standard program? So if we were to start in January, you know, we're not there yet or we're not we're way past that, but look at the full program. How many applications do you have? So, um, you know, depending if you're in the cooler um, states, you might be looking at four a year. If you're going down south, you might be looking at more like seven. I'm just, again, going to change the number just so you see how it, how it gets affected here. So we're, I'm going to say this company has six applications left in their, or has in their yearly program. Okay, but now how many applications are left now from September, you know, starting tomorrow through December? How many applications are left? So um, I'm going to again change it to three, just we're going to say we're in some warmer temperatures, maybe you say we have three applications left. Okay, and then what is your average application pr uh, price? Now, usually in the industry standard is um, your application program times six. So it kind of fills it in for you, but you could fill it in as well. So um, either way there. Um, so we've put it in as um, six times 65 comes to 390 with three applications left. A new customer signing up now today would give you $585 in new revenue. OK, so um, this number that it's figured out is going to carry through to all these other worksheets. So it's really important that you start here and kind of do this math so that it works as we go along. OK, then once, as we go forward, we're, we're going to set some goals. This is what's going to happen if we do sell. Now, what are Nicole, we going to just, just go back? Go, go back real quick. Nicole, it's Barrett again. Yep. So as, as we look at this, it's 7000 square foot for the treatable turf, $65 cost per application times so 65 times six. Um, plus, that's for the annual, plus um, the cost of what your aeration and seeding would be if, if, that's the, if that's an extra sale that you're looking to get this fall. You may have other extra sales that you might look, it's not the only thing you could sell in the fall, but it's a common thing, especially in the mid-Atlantic. Right. And so that'd be $390. So you take the applications times six plus 390 and that gets us to our 565 or 585 for the, for the entire year. That wouldn't be what's left this year. That's, that would be what would be in an entire calendar year, correct? So I don't think that's so. just what's left this year. That's just what's left this year. It's 65 times three. So that's um, 190, $200 about, and then right. plus the 390. Okay. So I just want to be clear what, what numbers we're looking at. So next year yep. would be a much more valuable customer if you got them on aeration as well. If you didn't get the aeration, it, it'd probably be a similar value because you'd pick up on a couple extra apps, you'd lose the aeration, but either right. way you'd have, end up with a 500 and something, $600 customer. Correct. Yep. I, I, yep. Think, I just wanted to kind of review that so we all know what math we're looking at. Yep, absolutely. Very important. Thank you. All right. So if we then jump over um, to the next pre-work, this fall, I call this fall because you're adding the aeration in. Um, if we if we jump over to pre-work, you could figure out where you're going now, what's your fall goals for this season um, in two ways. This way is a little more complicated, but it's still a way some people think about it. And, and so I offer that way. And, and here you're doing, um, you know, what's your current revenue, your current customers, your annual revenue, and you're coming down to some, some numbers this way. Down here, it's a little bit easier and you only need to do one way or the other. But down here, if we just say what's our annual or what's our revenue goal for the fall? So between now and December, what's your goal? So again, I'm just going to change this number just so you can see here if it was 30,000 new sales dollars uh, in the fall, you would be looking at getting 51 new customers. I'm going to move this up and just make it 50,000 just to give us a new number and you can see here it, it pulls this 585 this revenue per new customer it's going to pull that number from over here remember this is going to be really important as we keep moving and so there's that 585 of new new revenue per customer and you need 85 new customers this fall in order to get fifty thousand dollars in new revenue okay now we're going to go back to those budgeting dollars right remember we want the growth versus marketing dollars we want that to be in in um in sync so if we go down here it says you will need how many dollars so if we want to do this um we're looking at um 
at needing to spend about $11,000, okay? If you don't have $11,000 to spend, then you wanna go back and say, well, maybe I only wanna make uh, sell 40,000 in your revenue. If say we have a little extra money, our sales were really good this, this way, um, or this season and this year, and I wanna go a little stronger, maybe I'm gonna make it up to 60 so that I can really feed that machine and, and really put that money into growth. So really make sure you're analyzing this number right here. Um, as, as you're moving along to make sure that those are in harmony. If you're not gonna spend the money, you're not gonna get the sales. And um, if you're looking to get more sales, how much more money do you need to sell to get that? So um, Barrett, can you chime in for a few minutes? I just, I, I have some construction happening here and they opened a door, so it's making it loud. I wanna just um, close that door so we're not getting that feedback. Yeah, and so um, when you look at your, you know, Nicole threw in this, this uh, calculation, gets it to somewhere around $11,000. Obviously, she's making an assumption that our cost per sale um, is in that hundred to one hundred twenty-five dollars. That that doesn't mean that that you're going to guarantee to have a cost per sale. That that means we have a target, a goal to keep our cost per sale in that range. And obviously, if we made it less than a hundred dollars, that would be a good thing. Um, if it's over one hundred twenty-five dollars, as an example, then you better be thinking about, you know, what kind of customer you're getting, and if that makes a lot of sense. You know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to ROI, and ROI stands for return on invested capital. So when you think about marketing dollars, the way I like to think about it is um, I look at gross margin dollars. So let's just say that your gross margin for your business, uh, for your, your services is 50% gross margin. And you know, and I see guys gross margins in the 40 to 60% range, depending on your market and your pricing and your efficiencies and all that stuff. Um, so what, let's talk about what goes into gross margin. To me, gross margin is um, any, any money that's left over after I pay for the absolute necessities that I need to do to basically uh, fulfill that service to that customer. So just the necessities. So what I'm talking about is our truck, our fuel, um, our labor, only our labor associated with getting that job done, not our management labor or our accounting labor, our customer service labor, just the labor and getting that job done. So the guy in the truck, the truck itself, uh, you know, spread out over the life of the truck, divided by the number of lawns, you know, gives you a general truck cost. Um, your fuel for that, and then your fertilizer and chemical costs. And so when you add up all those costs, you know, my experience is that that usually ends up eating somewhere between 40 and 60% of your total uh, cost of, of uh, what the application costs. And obviously you can be better or worse than that depending on how you run your business. I'm just giving you generics of what I see out there. So let's just pretend it's 50%. So if you think about your return on invested capital, if you can generate $50,000 at a 50% gross margin, then we're gonna get $25,000 in gross margin dollars. That's, that's our gross margin profit. And that cost us 10,600, almost $11,000 to get. So what's that 14? The ROI. The ROI is 14,000? Yep. How did you get that? Just take the gross minus the investment. The gross margin, oh, the $25,000. So $50,000 times 50% is $25,000 minus the 10,600 is the investment. So your, your, your margin that's left over after your marketing dollars is $14,000 for this year. Now, it's, got, it's actually better than that because next year, you don't have any marketing costs to those customers. They're yours for free, so you get all the gross margin dollars. Now, I, I'm talking about gross margin dollars, not net margin dollars, and they're two different numbers. Net margin is the margin you actually get to put in your pocket at the end of the year if you're the owner. And so that is your gross margin dollars is where it starts, but then it goes into you got to pay for your shop and your insurance and your maintenance and your your office staff and your computer expenses and you know if you have accounting and, and all of those other things besides just whatever it takes to get the job done that eats up a whole bunch of ex additional money and then what's left over is your net profit dollars and so if you think about your business um, the reason I I only think about gross margin dollars when I'm doing marketing is because I'm assuming that I've got a customer base already that's covering my overhead, you know, my office, my secretary, my, my, um, my accounting. So I'm assuming that my business is already paying for those things. And if I go get, you know, let's say 20 new customers, I don't need to get another office, another secretary, another accounting staff. All those things are going to be the same. All I've got to do is pay the extra incremental cost of getting those jobs done. So just the extra fertilizer, the extra chemicals, the extra labor. I probably don't even need to get an extra truck because I can actually, if I get the right customers, I can get more lawns out of the same trucks 
So it actually gets even more efficient as they add those customers. And so I, I like to think about gross margin dollars. And if I can basically pay for my customer acquisition or my marketing costs with gross margin dollars in the first year and have anything left over, generally I'm okay. Obviously, the more left over, the better. But as long as I keep that customer year two, year three, year four, and I don't have to pay marketing dollars to keep them, then you know, you're know you doing pretty well long term. Now, it might, doesn't mean you get rich quick. It doesn't mean you put a bunch of your money in your pocket this year because you've got to invest lots into marketing. But if you can at least cover that marketing investment and grow the business and do a good job of keep those customers, it does start to really pay off like, a, you know, like an annuity or a savings account. Um, so I like to look at gross margin dollars to think about my return on invested capital. Um, so with that, Nicole, I will uh, go back to you. Thank you so much. Sorry, I had a door closed, thought we were covered, and they opened the door on me. So I think we're back to a bit quieter, and uh, that was good information there to, to feed in. So thank you. Um, so we, I'm going to stick to, we're going to try and grow um, by $50,000 this fall um, at a revenue per new customer of $585. That means I'm looking to get 85 new customers. So just like this uh, $585, carried over this 85 is going to carry over to this next um, this next tab or worksheet into monthly goals and all this is going to do is breaking it down into manageable chunks you know just like if you're losing weight or, or you're trying to get something done when it's such an overwhelming task and you think how am I ever going to get this done if you break it down into um, smaller much more manageable chunks it makes it easier so on this next tab you need to do nothing it should uh, fill it all in for you. Okay, and so it breaks it down to how many customers you should get in August, September, October, and November. And this is just a, a simple bell curve. It's really built a lot for um, the mid-Atlantic. So again, nothing is locked. All my formulas are open here. And if you take, and, and this one, it's got 20%. Here it's got 40% in September. October's got 30%, and then we go back down to 10%. So overall, I'm just looking to get that 100% and spread it out over the season, okay? Again, 17 new sales seems much more manageable, right? Okay, let me get that flywheel started. Let me get my sales machine and marketing machine moving, and 17 sounds much more manageable, okay? Now, if I'm losing weight, wow, 17 still sounds pretty big. So let me break that down even further into the weeks in those months. So here, if we started July 30th and, and broke it down into two, uh, and again, it's just using this bell curve again, um, two the first week, uh, three the next week, four the uh, three another week, four, five. Now we've got our 17 our 17 sales. And again, you're getting those sales started, you're getting your um, language down, you're getting your your um, your groove going. So um, when you start looking at it that way and start saying, oh, okay, you know, if I just I want to lose two pounds this week, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to have a salad for lunch. Uh, you know, if, I'm, if all you had to do this week was get two sales, three sales the next week, and they start building it, it um, your your pipeline starts building, your momentum starts building, and then it, it gets starts to get bigger and better as, as you move along. And then obviously we all know it's seasonal and, and it starts to taper off then at the end. So this again is just breaking it down. You don't have to do anything on this spreadsheet if you don't want to. If you wanted to, you could go ahead in and start putting your actual goals in or your actual sales in. So say you got one for um, $650, maybe it was a bigger property, okay? Um, looks like on this one, I messed up my, uh, my revenue as well. So like I said, they get messed up as I keep moving along, but the one you get, we'll, we'll add them up and uh, keep moving. So you can then put your actuals in each week and it carries it down and adds it up for your month. And then the, the months, added up to your fall total. So you can really see where you stand within your sales as you go along if you continue to put your sales in throughout the season. If if you see, uh, you know, one customer called me and said, wow, I'm, I'm really behind. I thought I was gonna have a lot more truck sales and that hasn't happened. So can you look at this with me and see, you know, where it's gonna come? Well, we saw that their curve just happened a little later. Their, their weather happened a little further. Their truck sales, their guys were really being pushed on some production. So we made a few tweaks and then we're able to write the than in the last two months. So it just, it's, it's a way to really give you an overview of what you're doing and how you're doing within your program and your plan. Okay, all about manageable chunks. 
Now, from here, I'm going to go into campaigns. And I think this is where um, there's, there's some really good information where you could just pick and pull one or two things. So far, I've really looked at the big picture, looked at creating a really big plan. But now you might have some things where you can just pick and pull what might work for you today, um, tomorrow, next week, to really get something moving um, as fast as you can. So we're going to talk about three different types of campaigns, because so far, we've talked about all the numbers. You know, I, I want to get this. I'm going to spend that. I I want this many sales. I want this much revenue. Well, that sounds great, except for how am I going to do it? Just like, how am I going to lose my weight? You know, I needed to start then putting a plan in place with different action items. So there's three different categories um, of um, outbound marketing uh, that, that I think are really important. The first one is considered low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit is the cheapest and easiest way to get new customers. So um, it is the first thing I would do if you can do low hanging fruit. It's cheap, it's easy, and um, it, it really just allows the sales to come in. So really a great first step. We're going to look at those in a second. Golden streets are much more expensive and much more labor intensive. They require a lot of work to get sales in these category in this category. However, it is the most important category for you to help the health of your business. Getting golden streets, getting working to build density within your routes will really help the health of your business and help your top line be more profitable. So, um, you know, you're going to go cheap and easy to really just get the sales moving. You're getting golden streets now that is really going to help the health of your business and uh, help you with that, that profit margin, but will be much more expensive worth it though in the end and um and much more labor intensive and then the last is really direct mail and it's it's uh, i put direct mail in there it's guerrilla marketing it's, it's a lot of different things that can be pulled into um just general marketing out there and uh, people will say direct mail doesn't belong here and if you want to take it out that's fine but i believe this is where the marketing machine really has to come together and then on this last tab, it'll pull all of these tabs together and it'll put your plan all into one so you can see, does it really match what your goal is and, um, and, and what you're looking to spend? So let's dig in. Low hanging fruit, cheap and easy. Low hanging fruit are people who already know you. They are twice as likely to buy from you, okay? Um, this is cancels, other service, request estimate. I can't tell you how many people I've gone to their office and they said, oh, uh, those cancels, they canceled on me. They were mean, they were nasty, they were this, they were that. They canceled on me, I'm not going after them. Guess what? Who knows why they canceled? The grass might not have been greener on the other side of the street, right? We all know, oh, my neighbor's looks better. Well, yeah, wait till you get to your neighbor's yard and see all the weeds, okay? Um, maybe they're not happy where they went. Maybe they never got anybody else and now they're looking at their yard thinking, oh, damn, I wish I really had somebody doing this still. Um, maybe they, money was tight for a year, but they're ready to come back. There are many reasons people will come back after they've, they've canceled. Same thing, if they requested an estimate, who knows why they didn't buy? You know, maybe the time wasn't right. Maybe they never got around to it. Maybe their neighbor sold them on somebody else and they're not happy. But they've already heard about you. You already know they're qualified and they're interested in lawn care. Go after them again, okay? Pull those request estimates out. And then, um, that's the one I'm missing. Oh, other services. If, if somebody has your um, has already done something with you, whether it's a design build or a mowing or a mulching or a trim job, they already know they've already got a rapport with you. Put it out there that you also offer so and so services. OK, and um, make that make that known to them. And all three of these categories, once you get your language down and your writing, tell them something uh, that you're excited about, a reason to come back, a reason to uh, make, to come to your business, um, or a reason to, to also join you in these other services. Once you get your language written specifically on that canceled customers, it'll sort of start rolling out really well. So let's just follow the canceled customers across here, okay? And, and we'll change them a little bit just to, just to look at it. In the canceled customers category, you want to look back 18 to 24 months. How many cancels have you had in those months? Now, I, I picked those months because of the do not call list. You can continue to call people if you want um, up to 18 months after they've been a customer. 24 is pushing it a little bit. So, you know, depend how far you want to push it. You might go back to 12. Depends how many you have. Depends at the end when you analyze this campaign, how much do you want 
to not get or get and, and how can you maneuver it? So, you know, look at those and see, decide what's best for your company. So I'm gonna change this just for a second here and uh, we're gonna say there's 80 new customers or canceled customers in the last 12 to 18 months or 18 to 24. And um, I'm gonna change this because again, it's something I've changed. You will actually get a 10% close rate, okay? So if you send out 80 letters, you will get eight new customers, okay? We know that our revenue per customer uh, or per new sale is $585. So this, this campaign is gonna give you almost $5,000 in new revenue, okay? So 10%, might not, you're like eight customers, well, well wait do you see as we get into some of the other campaigns, it, it's gonna be a lot harder. So all I want you to do in order to get this response, this return on your investment, is to send out a letter. So I've built a dollar for envelopes, paper, ink, um, stuffing, all of that, a dollar per, per mailer, per 80 piece, eight piece, 80 pieces, and then your postage of almost 50 cents now. So when we add up all of those costs, 80 times $1.50, we get 119.20, does that seem right? My math seems right, I think so. Um, we're then Barrett, looking let me just chime in real quick on cancels. So um, we used to do cancels and uh, we, we had a, a calling room with our old lawn care business. Oh, you're, and no, Barrett, 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 hold on. Hold right. your horses. <laughs> hold your horses. So um, it looks like your cost here is gonna be about $120 and you're gonna get eight new customers. That gives you a cost per sale of $15. Like, how can you beat that? Like that, I just told you you wanna be between 100 and $125. That's like absolutely phenomenal. So we're looking at a great number. However, if you remember back here at this one, I actually had 20%. And the reason I have 20% is because if you do like Barrett had and you call those 80 people, then um, you're going to double your response. So instead of 10%, you're going to get 20%. Okay, so instead of those eight sales, you'll get 16 sales off of 80. And all you have to do is call them. Just call them once. Now, the reason I don't have it built in there, Barrett, um, and, and there's there would be some costs associated with it, say 300, is because what I found over the years is that people say, oh, that sounds great. I really want that extra eight sales at a really great return on my investment, um, but it's really hard to call. So you really have to be committed to it because you can't put one person in a room and say, I mean, you can if you want, but it depends on your results and say, here, call a hundred people and you're going to get 90 or 80 no's, right? That, that's like sitting just being beat by a bat, right? So make it exciting. Bring a couple employees together, three, four people, make it a, um, a team building effort and um, bring them in, put $20 on the board for the first sale, $20 on the board for the most sales, bring in some pizza. You know, if you're dividing 100 uh, calls between three people or four people, you're looking at 25, 30 calls. Now that's not so bad. You can kind of fly through that best time of night or the best time of day to call is from four to eight at night. So you really have to be committed to it. And if you're committed to it, you can absolutely double your results. And if you look here, our return on our investment now dropped in half, you know, so, and I might have a, I might have a math error there as I'm looking at it, because it doesn't add in that additional cost. So it go, might, uh, let's see what it does to it. Nope, didn't like that. Okay, so it brings it up to about $25 cost per sale, but again, we're way ahead, and that's with $300 cost, call center cost, which I just threw that out there. By, by the time you buy some pizza, give 20 bucks away twice, your payroll for that time, or some commissions, you know, just building that in, that, that's just a number I threw at it. It might be different for everybody, but um, you still, $26 compared to 100 to 125, this is the cheapest and easiest sales you're gonna get. This is low hanging fruit. It is the first campaign you should go after, and it will get your sales rolling. Barrett? Yeah, you, you covered everything I was going to say there, Nicole. I, I hadn't been through this in a while, so I didn't know you were getting there. But but my bottom, my, my big message was people are afraid of cancels because they're miserable people that, you know, you, you, they were miserable when they canceled and you, you, you think you want to stay away from those people. But my call, we had a call center 
in our old lawn care business, and we, we would give them the cancels every month, whatever cancels were from the previous month, and it was like red meat because those guys knew they could close them at 20% and get a lot of commission. And all you got to do is just tell people you're sorry, ask them why they canceled, and, and then just make every effort to fix whatever their problem was. Maybe you didn't call them ahead. Maybe you left the gate open. People make mistakes. Just say you're sorry and ask for them to give you another chance, and frequently they will. Um, it is critical that you call. If you're going to bother calling them, you know, call them at, in the evenings because that's when people actually answer the phone in their home, um, unless you have cell phones. And um, but whether it's a direct mail or a phone call or even just knock on somebody's door, you know, getting it, you know, those canceled customers are the best source of new customers, um, and they're easier to get than you think. Back to you. Thanks. So uh, open estimates and other services work exactly the same way. I'm not going to take you through that as our time is ticking away, but um, they're low hanging fruit. All three of those campaigns should be the easy ones right off the bat. Again, remember when I said um, different customers are going to cost different amounts of money. Uh, these are going to be cheaper. Um, they might not, they might be spread out, not help your density so much, um, but they'll be easy and cheap. I also said that if you are a new business, um, you're not going to have these cheaper sales to, to gain. And so it's a little, it drives your cost per sale up. This average, this low uh, hanging fruit really brings your average down when we look at the, the marketing machine. So um, it's really important to, um, to know that if you're a new customer or a new company, then, then you're not going to have these. It's going to drive your cost per sale up a little bit. I'm going to um, skip. I have referral in here as well uh, as low hanging fruit. It's not as um, as low hanging. It's still low hanging fruit, but it's not as um, good as a ROI. Um, if I went through the numbers here, you'd be looking at about a $65 cost per sale because you're probably giving away the referrer and the referee at least $25 in either services or gift cards or things like that. But I want to keep moving just because I think there's some important things in some of those uh, these other campaigns that will help us um, help you as much. So in the essence of time, let's move on to Golden Streets. Remember, cheap, easy, low-hanging fruit. Golden Streets, on the other hand, is um, more expensive and it's more labor-intensive. However, this will help the health of your business because you're going to build density. The less windshield time your um, employees have, the more profitable you'll be, the happier they'll be because they'll have really tight uh, routes and really be happy to come in, get the work done, and get out of there. So it's really uh, to build density, which in other words is Golden Streets building those neighborhoods where um, you can have density and have less windshield time is really where, um, where the money's out at. And just kind of, um, I'm going to flip over for a second here. Um, Barrett did a little bit of this earlier and um, 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 I had this open. There it is. So your Golden Street Map, this is kind of what Barrett hit on earlier, and now you'll see it in some numbers. Um, if, if you have a, an existing customer and you put those costs that Barrett said in, you know, travel, um, your labor to complete the job, the material, the fuel trucks, you know, you're looking at about $39 of an $87 application price, um, which comes down to about a 55% gross profit, okay? Um, you, you take that over a year. In this particular case, there were eight applications. Then you add in those other costs that Barrett talked about, overhead without marketing, that electric, the building, the secretaries, you know, all of those things. Uh, Going to build in a little bit of profit here, 5%, just to, just to pat ourselves a little bit um, at 5%. And then this is what you're willing to spend to get a new customer. Remember I said between $100 and $125. It makes Makes perfect sense there. Lifetime over five years, we're looking at $542 of, um, of profit in that customer, okay? If we were to get the neighbor of the existing customer, you think, yeah, well, so what? You still gotta send the truck out? You still have, up, up, up. Well, let's look at it. Your, your um, first layer of costs dropped by almost, um, not quite $20. Okay, $19 there. Um, just because your fuel trucks, you know, we've, we've saved the fuel and the truck costs. We've uh, saved on the travel. So we, we've saved dramatically right there. Um, and, and that brings your gross profit to 75% from 55%. And then if we take our, um, our overhead out because we still have to have those secretaries we still have to set, have the buildings now as barrett said hopefully you have business that's already supporting that but we're still going to take it out we're still going to have that overhead that still is requiring funding um, we're still going to leave our five percent profit in 
now look at what we have left. We actually have in a yearly uh, program, we actually have almost $250 to spend to get the neighbor of an existing customer. Okay, it's really dramatic that there is so much more um, availability of money and marketing dollars to spend to get the neighbor of an existing customer. On top of that, you're really saving on your production costs. And, and you know, you can see up here, this is where it's hitting directly. So you can, uh, you can give them special pricing, um, you can spend more to gain them. And so um, building density, finding your golden streets is a really profitable spot. And, and it, I would strongly suggest uh, that, that you go there. It is the place that I see um, people lose focus most because again, it's labor intensive and I'm gonna show you why. So I would want you to pick between three and five neighborhoods. Okay, when I say neighborhoods, I'd like no less than 100 homes and no more than 500 homes. I've had people tell me, oh, I'm going to go after the city of so-and-so. It's just a small little town. Yeah, but it's still like a lot of streets and a lot of space and a lot of people and break it down. Where I've had people say, well, I have this neighborhood they built. It's a massive, um, you know, planned community and there's 1,500 homes in it. Well, you know, you can't possibly really get to know all of them. Break them down into, into much smaller chunks. Maybe one year go after the east part, the west part. The, you know, break it down to where you're looking at somewhere between 100 and 500 customers at the most, and start doing things to become part of their community. Okay, so. Um, Start to make personal relationships, gain referrals, be part of the bus stop marketing. So you have to think outside of the box here, okay? And I'm gonna come back to ways that you can think outside of the box, but I wanna show you some math first. So in neighborhood one, I would suggest you put the names in here. So they're very clear, written out, everybody's very crystal clear on what, what neighborhoods you're going after. Put the number of homes in that, in that community. And then your goal here is 5%. Now on the last campaign, I wanted you to get 10%, but that was on one mailing, right? This time I'm looking for you to get 5%, but look over here, I added a new column of number of touches. I want you to go after them five times at least, okay? And each time you do this, I'm looking for you to spend $1.50, right? So you're, you're still doing your letter and then postage, or um, you know, I, I've got up here Frisbees and postcards, prepay offers, Think outside of the box and spend a dollar fifty five different times, okay? And really go after how can you build community in and be part of that community um, so that you are the go to person. Um, and so I we don't have our revenue in here, so I'm just gonna type that in real quick. Um, so this campaign over a whole season, five different touches, you're looking to get about $9,000. It's going to cost you about $2,200 and your cost per sale is going to be about $150. So, um, you know, it's not, it's, I'm not at that 250 mark where I said you had the capability to go to that. Um, but it's also not in that hundred to $125 range. So there's lots of room for movement within this, um, within these campaigns. The number of touches is where you need to get creative, okay? And um, some suggestions. There are things we've tried such as um, we rented the ice cream truck and uh, bought, all you have to do is buy all the ice cream in the truck and they'll go wherever you want them to go. So all the ice cream went out with a coupon that said ice cream was on was on us that day and uh, we highly suggest, you know, you know come come check out our website or, you know, get another offer 10% off by using this offer code or, you know, whatever it is. Um, Frisbees, you, you may have heard us talk about Frisbees. Um, door hangers, we love door hangers. However, they are labor intensive to put them out. They go on front doors where people don't use their front doors much anymore. And uh, they're paper, they get thrown in the trash real fast. So um, we had a, actually had a technician come up with an idea one year we were at upset because they weren't actually hanging door hangers that they were supposed to be hanging. And they said, well, I play Frisbee golf and uh, I'd love to get some practice with some Frisbees. So we started throwing Frisbees in some of these neighborhoods and um, they really had a great response. They cut the labor costs down to getting them out. The guys were excited to be throwing Frisbees. They're plastic, they didn't really get thrown out, they got put into the toy bin. And hey, guess what? They're playing Frisbee on their lawn, on their grass, looking at your logo. So um, Frisbees are a great way to think outside of the box. 
on a side note, everybody says, do people get mad that you, you know, threw something on their lawn? There's two ways people get mad. One is um, if their dog eats it or their pet eats it and gets sick and has to go to the vet. So make sure they're pet friendly. And the second way is if they're, uh, uh, they drive over it and it shatters into a million pieces and they have to clean up a mess. They're not real happy. So um, shatterproof and pet proof are really important on Frisbees. Um, another thing we did was we, we became in, involved in, in a community event. So um, there was a community that had a 5K run to raise money for MS. So we sponsored that. We had a table there. Our logo was on the shirts that got given out. We had runners. Uh, we had a water table that, that gave cups away. So, you know, we really became involved in that. And I know for a fact, <laughs> true story, the guys used to fight over those routes because they could just go in there and they would not, they, you couldn't even find them because they would put the truck in there and then they just start going and they could get so much work done and uh, be done at a reasonable, reasonable time. Everybody was happy. And um, so become involved in the community, think outside of the box and uh, think of those golden streets. They'll really help the health of your business. Kate, have we had any questions? Nope, it's all crickets. <laughs> and uh, they're still there? I didn't put them to sleep? No, I think you just blew them away. <laughs> I hope so. Barrett, anything to chime in on Golden Streets? No, just that, I mean, this is this is a big revelation for us when we were running our lawn care business because what was happening was um, uh, the cost per sale for our business was, was starting to creep up. And it was, you know, we were, at one point we were at 80, and it started to creep up to like 150. And I wasn't so excited about that um, because I was looking at my return on invested capital. And, um, and so I started to analyze, I say, I, you know, we as a team actually started to analyze um, the, um, the gross margin per customer. And once we realized that, wow, and it's a, you know, not a big idea, but I think a lot of times we just lump everything into the same bucket. But when we started to realize that, that specific streets, specific subdivisions, we were likely to get 15 or 20 homes in that subdivision or on that street. And, and how much more profitable they are, all of a sudden you start to realize your return on invested marketing dollars um, can be so much greater that even spending 200 or 250 to get a neighbor of a customer to Golden Street was, was acceptable, in fact, more acceptable in many cases than getting some new customer on some new street where we didn't have anybody, um, or, or a street where, you know, those streets where they're, maybe they're older subdivisions are not likely to get a bunch in a row, or it's a it's a house that sits on a main on a main highway or a big road where you're not going to get neighbors. I mean, nice customers. I'm not saying you know get rid of those customers. What I am saying is, if you're going to spend marketing dollars to go get somebody, you might as well spend marketing dollars to go get the most valuable customers first, the ones that are going to give you your your quickest return on invested capital, and that's going to be the ones that have the, the highest gross margin, and that's going to be the neighbors of existing customers in Golden Streets. And a Golden Street isn't everybody that you have a customer. It's you got a customer on a street. And it's a street that you've identified that you want to own because you're likely to have, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 customers in that subdivision because of the, the way that those people buy. Um, and, and that's where you want to be a household name. And that's where you want to spend your time and energy before you, you, in my mind, do a lot of broadcast stuff because it's just so much more valuable. Back Absolutely. To you, Absolutely important. The other thing is... Um, the people will tell you right off the bat, what's your number one source? Oh, I saw your truck. Well, guess what? These three neighborhoods, your trucks, every single one of your trucks should go in and out of those neighborhoods throughout their day. So when, they, when they're leaving for the day, they go through those neighborhoods. When they're coming back, they go through those neighbor, neighborhoods. It's part of their route. It's just more often they're seeing your truck, okay? Jumping over to direct mail. So many people wanna um, take this out of their plan and just, you know, think it's old school and not part of it, but really you have to look at it as part of the marketing machine. Um, the post office has created Every Door Direct Mail, EDDM. If you haven't looked into it, I highly suggest it. It makes it fairly reasonable to, um, to mail. And if you really pick your routes, um, Closely, it just becomes part of that marketing machine. Make sure they're going to the Golden Street areas, make sure they're going to low hanging fruit areas, and it just becomes part of the plan. Um, there are some things in here, usually this direct mail line, when I, when I get through this whole sheet, sending out some postcards, um, maybe buying some lists, um, maybe doing some coupon mailers, you know, not 
you know, one zone four times or something like that, it usually comes out, this one usually comes out to about 250 costs for sale. So people say, really? You told me 100 to 125 and now you're telling me to do something that's 250. Why would I do that? Yeah, I, I see your point. But really important is coming over here to this last tab that's fall campaigns. And that brings all of these pieces Okay, all of those different campaigns, the low hanging fruit, the golden streets, your direct mail, um, all of those pieces, it brings it all together and average out, you know, you take all your costs and the number of sales that you're aiming to get and divide them out and look at that. We've got an average cost of $120. We're right there in that, in that neck of the woods. Now, the other important thing is to say, all right, well, the goal was, uh, or, or here is the, um, after putting all our real numbers, you know, I just made up all those numbers. So you got to put some real numbers in there. And um, after I add them all up, what number does it get me to and how much did I spend? Now let's go back to our pre-work. Um, we said we wanted to get 85 new customers and we were going to spend $11,000. Well, we're getting 112. So we're getting about 30 extra customers and we're going to spend about $2,000 more. So do we want to spend that money? Or do we want to go back and eliminate some things? So make sure that you know you have that money. And um, I know Barrett would say, "I'll find the two thousand dollars for an, addition, an additional thirty customers." You know. Um, so in other cases, I've seen people put real numbers in here, and they're you know they're at sixty instead of eighty. Okay, well where are we going to do? You can't add more low hanging fruit. So you're either going to make sure you're really consistent on those golden streets and try and improve on your goal there, or you're going to Go to some direct mail and some guerrilla marketing, you know, put some trucks out somewhere, put some lawn signs um, in, in some easements on the weekends, you know, and start to get creative. So um, you really it's important when you get down to the end here um, to really look at is what the result of all those numbers and all that analysis, does it really connect with your pre-work? Are you getting what you're, what you're aiming for? Okay, I'm gonna um, jump out of here again. I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint and then um, I'm, I'm getting close to the end here. I want to show you two more things. Uh, one, some mistakes I've seen people make. Um, they add costs into the marketing budget that don't belong. Things that are just the cost of doing business. You know, somebody said to me, I did everything you said. We followed this plan to a T and I didn't get... I didn't get the sales and I was so perplexed. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, what happened? I said, well, send me, send me your numbers. And he still didn't make sense. And I said, well, okay, you said you spent that money. What, what did you spend it on? Send me a list. Well, sales, uh, sales training materials, lawn signs, things that you would have to do no matter what. You're going to have to train your staff. You're going to have to put lawn signs out. So that's just the cost of doing business. The, the costs that I'm looking at are things that actually get into your prospects hands and into their mind showing your business name and your services okay um people don't do enough things or they don't do multiples you know one person one postcard's not going to get you much one time in a golden neighborhood is not going to get you much you're going to have to stay in front of everybody Keep in mind that marketing machine, we are really overwhelmed with a lot of marketing and a lot of advertising in this day and age. So make sure you're not just seen once. Carry that same theme through. Don't change it multiple times. People need to see consistently. You know, the, the saying, uh, people don't remember something until they've heard it eight times. Well, same thing goes here. People don't remember what you're putting in front of them until they've seen it eight times. So um, make sure you're doing something over and over again. Um, again, Golden Streets are labor intensive. They get pushed to the side fairly quickly. So, you know, got to remember that. And then um, in that spreadsheet, people will call me and say, oh, I messed it up. What did I do? I didn't, formulas aren't making sense. I changed them a little in today's because I've been using that all season. But uh, the one that you get, which should be clean. And if you change just the yellow cells, it should all work. And then if you need to add some things in, reach out to Kate or myself, and we'll be happy to um, help you get it cleaned up or, or get you moving in the right direction. But if you change just the yellow cells, you should be in good shape. The last thing for today, which is, is I think really important, is how can Hoganics help? Okay, so we, I just went through this spreadsheet. You can find the recording of everything um, on our website. And there's, there's a lot of different, um, different places where we can help. But a really big one is on the Holganics website. So if you go to the Holganics website here, 
and um, you go to resources, Hoganics University. It takes a few clicks here, but it's really worth it. And um, if you jump down here, you know, you pick which category you're in. Are you in, on a golf course, sports turf, or are you selling Hoganics? These, a lot of the uh, information in each of these is the same. It just um, is a little more um, tailored to that person uh, and what they're what they're looking for. So, for example, if you go into lawn care, it's going to ask you for your email. It knows me obviously well. And then we're going to scroll down again. And now there's all these resources down here. So webinars. If you click on this, it's going to give you both um, live webinars that are on the schedule. So you could sign up for more of these. Or it's also going to give you recorded webinars. If you're up night, can't sleep, and you want to sit and listen to a webinar, all our webinars are recorded and put in here. So um, lots of webinar history and lots to learn in there. Obviously, you've been to a bio summit. That's why you're here today. So you know the power of that. And uh, so this will show you upcoming bio summits. Uh, we're going to come back to marketing tools in a second. Ebooks is a lot of um, in-depth information, more about learning about the biology and the science and digging a little deeper into the product and, and more learning um, in, in uh, a book format, a digital book format. And then this product info is more like the labels and the MSDS or SDS, I guess they're called now. Um, so that's there for you. But then in this marketing tools is a really big another group of stuff. And you'll see here there's postcards, there's lawn signs, door hangers, brochures, marketing boxes. And uh, this just takes you back. But if you um, start clicking in these, there's two. I mean, they all make sense. They're all helpful. You've got your brochures. By the way, we expect you to R&D. We expect you to rip, rip off and duplicate all of this. This is for your benefit. Uh, if you click on postcards here. And then we scroll down. There are three different postcards with some uh, language. Feel free to steal the language from any of these postcards or reach out. Kate or myself will have a designer um, update it with your logo and your information. But here we talk about it being a hybrid. You know, you're, you're combining chemicals and organic to give you um, the boost, just like a Prius would, right? Give you that environmentally friendly uh, option. And then here's the back that talks about it in that same language. And then we talk about it as a probiotic. You know, we're hearing so much about gut health and probiotics in this day and age. Um, so here's an option to talk about it as probiotics. And again, we put your name and, and logo in, uh, no charge. We'll get you the digital file. Um, and then down here, this is the back of that one that again gives you the probiotic language um, and, and Something you can, people always say to me, well, what am I gonna put on my website? Well, go look at the brochures, go look at the postcards and, and start looking at what makes sense to you. How does it feel for you to talk about what you're doing in these analogies and in, the, in this language and, and how does that fit your company? And then this one, um, you know, so many people say, oh, that organic stuff is snake oil, it doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. So this is a way to say to people, hey, look, my grandfather's lawn on steroids, you know, it looks pretty amazing with all those chemicals. My lawn looks exactly the same, except from using bionutrition and less chemicals. So you're still getting that great uh, result that you're looking for, but you're using a lot less chemicals. So it's just a way to really cross that line. And then the bottom here, I'm going to scroll down, there's been a little conflict on on this, but we've got two postcards that are all about aeration and using organics and aeration. This first one here has been somewhat of a debate. We've got your aeration helps your lawn breathe and obviously getting um, getting a fresh breath of fresh air. Uh, some some people claim that's a little too risque with her there breathing in, but I think it really gives you the, the imagery and the um, and the messaging that you want that your lawn needs to breathe and it's important. And then the back has your normal, you know, lawn aeration um, example and what it's doing. And then down here, it talks about, you know, using biology um, to restore the microbiology at the same time. So it, it promotes that in there. And then this last one, still on aeration and seed, is all about, um, you know, aeration being a piece of the puzzle. A lot of times people miss that, that piece because, ah, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fertilizing, it's green, it's this, it's that. Aeration sometimes can be that missing piece. So, and again, it talks about the aeration on the back and um, how organics would help. I'm gonna flip back one more time. 
Um, there's some great brochures in here. There's a homeowner brochure that hopefully you saw at the bio summit. And then this last place that's so, so um, helpful, I think, is these uh, marketing boxes. And Kate has really uh, worked hard in creating these. You know, So if you were creating a tree and shrub program, here's all the stuff that you could use in a tree and shrub program. Um, aeration in a box, are you doing, um, you know, you're getting you're into aeration season. So you have to click in and, and sign in. But once you get in there, look at this. You've got educational con content as well as tools. We've got videos that you can put on your website. You've got um, some PDF handouts. You've got um, some aeration equipment uh, information. So we really try and educate and help you guys learn on it. But then also what marketing tools, you know, you're writing on your invoices, right? What, what's it gonna say uh, to upsell customers to add aeration? Um, blogs or email newsletters that you can send to your customers, or uh, two postcards, um, and then again, the, the video blog and email newsletter that you, can, that you can use for your customers. So these marketing boxes are a plethora of information. So um, please, please dig into the Holganics University. It's another way that Holganics really wants to help you not with just, um, just selling you the product and, and giving it to you. We really want to help you in your business and, and be partners in that way as well. So I think I went about 15 minutes over, which isn't too bad. I hope I didn't put too many people to sleep. Barrett, what did I miss? Uh, nothing. I, I think you did a great job. Um, do we have any questions, Kate? Uh, someone had asked, when will this webinar be online? So just so that you guys are aware, we'll be editing it up tomorrow and I'll send it out to you guys automatically um, since you attended the webinar, but you can also find it in the Holganics University tomorrow later on in the afternoon. So give me the morning to put it together. End of day tomorrow, East Coast time. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, nice job, Nicole. Thanks for your help. And thanks everybody for taking time out of their busy day to kind of learn a little bit about how to grow your business. And if we can help with anything, you know, we're here for you. Yeah. Thank you everybody for taking the time. We really appreciate it. We know it's, um, it's important these days and, and valuable. Thank you, Nicole. Great info. We just got an email from somebody. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.